Hello, my name is Carrie Hill and I am a mom of two. I have a three-year-old and a five-month-old and I want to talk about sleep training today. So I get asked a lot about sleep training um, because I like to brag that my children sleep in until 9.30 plus on a Saturday morning. So everybody always wants to know how do you do that. Um, first I'll start out by saying that I work full time and my husband stays home so our kids do sleep in throughout the week. Um, they tend to get up between 8.30 and 9 on a regular basis throughout the week um, because we are lucky enough to not have to do daycare. So with that said, um, we also go to bed about 8.30 is our target, target time for the three year old to go to bed. Um, the five month old, we put him down between 9 and 9.30 usually after we put the three year old down. So I started sleep training when the both of my babies were tiny, tiny, tiny. It starts from the very beginning and I have um, two different kind of routes that we had to go but we stick to the same principles and I learned these principles from a mom of twins. So if she, I figured if she could successfully do this then we could too. So when it came time to have our baby, um, we listen to the advice of lots of people and there's lots of different methods and books and official things and I have no idea if this is part of an official method. I'm just going to tell you what has worked for us twice now and um, some wisdom that I've passed along before and um, you should hear if you're struggling with this. Um, oh and I guess also if, if you're not at that infant stage and you're not at the beginning, that's okay. Um, it's about consistency and so you can start now and yeah it's gonna be rough and really crappy probably for a while but um, you know a week or two of rough nights is worth years of sleep mornings so and sleeping through the night so um, first of all we can I mentioned consistency so you can't cave in you can't um, you can't alter your method every other day um, you need to stick to this I don't believe in the crying it out method. While I do believe that kids um, need to learn how to self-soothe a little bit, each kid kind of has their own way of doing that. Some kids really soothe from sucking, other kids soothe from physical touch. So just figuring out what that is for your child will help. And um, with my first one, it was sucking, and so she had a pacifier. Um, if that's not and if that's not your your deal, um, you know, f just figure out what that is. My second one, it was touch, so um, I'd have to put my hand on his chest while he kind of rested to sleep. But we start by swaddling. I'm a big fan of swaddling, and the blanket swaddles only worked for us for just a little while until the baby was too strong, and um, you know, within a month or two, could push out of the the blanket swaddles. So we got, I think they're called swaddle me's or something, I don't know, they have I'm not real particular on brand stuff, I get a lot of my stuff second hand. So um, they have velcro attachments that you, you push, you, it's a little sack so you put the feet in and then you wrap the kid up and it has little velcro things that attach on the side and you wrap the baby pretty tight because they, that um, secure tightness helps them kind of relax and know that they're in a safe place. And I know people say my kid hates being swaddled. Uh, my first one um, kind of showed that too, but we just kept doing it and trained her to be that's her comfortable place. So she knew when she was swaddled that she could relax and go to sleep. And when she was swaddled, she'd go to sleep for hours and hours and hours. So we first start by swaddling. Um, and then um, the other thing my, my friend with the twins taught me was um, clean butt, full gut, happy baby. So I guess before we swaddled, I, we should, you should change your baby and make sure they have a clean diaper to start with. And then swaddle them up and then top off the tank. You know, make sure they have a full belly going to sleep. They're not going to wake up hungry. Um, I am not one of those people that feeds on a schedule. I kind of feed more when my baby's hungry and you develop a schedule with a baby, I believe. So um, we did that. Um, full full baby, we put a fan on in our room, so some white noise, some noise to drown out the other things going on in the house because everybody else still has to live. 
you don't want to have to have everybody walk on their tiptoes all the time when the baby's sleeping so you can have a life too. That's kind of what this is all about, so you can um, feel like a normal human while you have a baby. Um, and so we have, the, we have the fan on and not blowing directly on a baby, that's really important as babies have a hard time controlling their temperature. So don't have a fan directly blowing on a baby, but have something in their room to drown out that noise. And every time the baby needs, goes to sleep, that fan should be on or that noise, whatever noisemaker, whatever you have, that should be on. So they recognize that as another trigger for them to sleep. Um, we have a bassinet that sits next to our bed for our infants and so we, I lay the baby down and uh, walk away out of sight and um, kind of let the baby see what the baby does. Sometimes you know the baby will go right to sleep, sometimes they'll just wriggle around. When they start to cry, this is super important. Do not pick them up. This is where most people break down and the baby starts to cry and they fuss and they pick him up and think they need to rock him to sleep and then put him back down. You want to have them learn that self-soothing a little bit, but leave them in there to cry a little bit. I said I'm not a, I'm not a fan of crying it out though, and especially when you're a new mom and your hormones are raging, hearing your baby cry is like the worst thing in the world to you. You can't stand it. But I remember one night um, just kind of wigging out my husband with our first and my husband yelling at me like, it's okay, babies cry. And so I actually had to leave the room. And so the longest I've ever let my babies cry would probably be 15 minutes while we're trying to get to sleep. So um, if your baby's still crying after 15 minutes, go in, calm them down, reassure them, not for very long. And then as soon as they're kind of calmed down, lay them back down. Put the pacifier in if you want. Um, you know, we, we have good luck with their Nook brand, NUK, and their zero to three pacifier. So they're for infants and they have a really tiny um, mouthpiece that the babies can suck on really easily. So um, rather than a big pacifier and, and something that the baby could, um, could it could be too much. So um, pay attention to that. Try different pacifiers if you're not having luck with that. Um, so we lay, lay the baby back down, kind of reassure them. If they're still kind of fussy and wriggling around, um, I put my hand on the baby's chest like this and just tap and just give that constant tapping motion. Um, and I, I've done that for up to 20, 30 minutes. I've laid there next to the baby and done that. Um, it does get better as you go along in this and the baby gets used to what you're doing, but you're gonna have, to, I mean, putting a baby to sleep can be an hour plus event sometimes and it's just being constant and consistent in what you're doing so your baby's laying there and you're you're tapping um, they'll eventually kind of go to sleep if they're still crying you know let them cry for 10 minutes or so 50 minutes whatever and pick them back up reassure them lay them back down start the tapping again um, you know make sure that they still have a clean diaper and um, that they're still full if you breastfeed or bottle feed or whatever that is you know top off the their tank I like to say um, but just keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that every single day um, we do this for nighttime only and then during the day we chose to we do naps out in the main room um, we, looking down the road with our first one we did this too but we didn't want the baby to wake up at every little noise so we actually do naps out in the main room and then once we start getting to the nap schedule in the two a days we will put the baby down um, just like we do at night during the day for for one big nap um, and just let him cat nap for the rest of the day so I know it's not scientific and I know it's I'm, I'm sure I could get criticism for different things but that's what works for us and it's worked twice now and it's worked for my friends that pass it along and sleep training is real and it's hard and it sucks, but it's so worth it just to give up, sacrifice that, that week or so, it'll be worth it. Um, I did mention that we had a little different route with my second one, so real quick, my second one had jaundice. So we sleep trained for a few days and things were getting getting a little better as he was, you know, days old. And then with the jaundice, we had to do a bilirubin light at home. So we all of a sudden had to strip the baby in just diaper only and, and put him under this light and he's sleeping with his arms and legs out. Um, and it was awful because he didn't want to sleep and, you know, he 
babies have that reflex and he was hitting himself and waking himself up. So we totally regressed and had to go all the way back through sleep training. So by this time he's pushing two weeks old and, and, um, he'd already kind of gotten used to just sleeping with his arms and legs out. And so we had to, we went back and had to redo training him to be used to the sleep sack. He hated it. Um, training him to sleep in this dark place and, and with this noise and all over again. We had to start all over again, but it worked. So I know that you can you can start all over. I'm not saying that this is how it's going to work with a three-year-old because we've been doing with this with her since she was an infant. Um, so if you're looking for older kids sleep training tips, I'm probably not, not the expert, but I think that all moms are experts and all moms have different ways of doing things and that have worked. So try something, be consistent with it for a couple weeks. And if it's just not your jam if, and if you hate it, stop doing it. If it's, if it's really not your thing, there's a million ways to do the things right. So join mom groups and listen and learn all you can. And don't ever assume that one way is right. So just sharing my wisdom on what I've learned about sleep training. I really hope this helps someone. Um, if you guys want more um, ideas on parenting and fitness and health and family health, um, I do have a group called K Hill Fitness, a page. So uh, go like my page, K Hill Fitness, where I share lots of stuff about family, food, and love. Um, have a great day.